Hi, if you don't know who I am, my name's Maddie Lambert. I have a beautiful four-year-old daughter named Everly. I am 18 years old right now. So if you can do basic math in your head, you'll probably figure out that I was about 14 when I gave birth to my daughter. If you already know me, welcome back. I gave birth at 14 years old and I got pregnant at 13 years old. And this is my story. So I've told this story before twice. The first time I told my story was May of 2018 and I retold my story for a second time I think in 2019. So it's been a good three years since I've told my story. I feel like I am such a different person now compared to then in so many ways. I am a completely different person. So I wanted to come back and retell my story because I feel like my perspective on a lot of it has changed and there's new details that I finally feel comfortable sharing. First, I want to clear something up. Yes, I am the same girl from the single mom at 14 video. Turns out y'all did the math for me actually. I got pregnant at 13 years old. I did the math with my due date and everything and when my daughter was born and I was 13 years old when I got pregnant. I turned 14 shortly after but I was in fact 13 years old when I got pregnant. Barely a teenager. This was the point of my life where I finally felt like I fit in. I had a not so great childhood with a lot of anxiety and bullying. I definitely never felt like I fit in, but whenever I was 13 years old, I finally felt like I found my place. Now that I fit in, I'm able to get a boyfriend. I was introduced to Everly's father, my boyfriend, when I was 13 on New Year's Eve at a little party. Not really a party. It was literally a bunch of middle schoolers. It was not a party. My friend introduced me to him and that's how we met and we started hanging out we started dating we're very young and naive naivety is one of the biggest things here we were very very naive that's how teenagers are in a relationship obviously you know what had to happen for uh, me to get pregnant at the school i was in and they did not teach us about protection i live in texas not in like the austin texas area or dallas where things are a bit more progressive but in fort worth texas where they still do a lot of things old-fashioned that has proved to be very harmful because the teen pregnancy rate in texas is much higher than a lot of other states who actually teach protection in my school there was a sex ed course that lasted maybe two weeks as part of our health class. All we had to do is fill out like a paper talking about it. All they really taught was abstinence. That was the only thing that was taught to us, abstinence. Just don't do it and you won't get pregnant. Teenagers aren't gonna listen to abstinence. I did not listen to abstinence and I did not know it was that easy to get pregnant. I know this sounds so dumb, but whenever I was 13 years old, I did not know it was that easy to get pregnant. I did not think it happened as often as it did. I did not think that it was as common and easy as it was. This is why I say we were so naive because I was so naive. I did not know that it only took one time to get you pregnant because I saw in movies and TV couples trying so hard to get pregnant and they couldn't get pregnant. So I'm like, oh, it must be something that's really hard. It's not, it's not at all, very easy actually, extremely easy, way easier than it should be for a 13 year old. I was not given the information that I needed to prevent this, so it happened. Me and my daughter's father dated for somewhere around four to six months. I say six months, but honestly, I'm not too sure the exact time frame. but we were not together for that long. Right before summer, before school let out for summer, we were going into our freshman year, both of us, he was the same age as me, he broke up with me. This was my first heartbreak. This was my first real relationship. I was so crushed. Here I was, pregnant, but I didn't know, and single. I got really depressed. Um, I was in bed almost all day every day. It was very hard for me to get out of bed. I was in a horrible state mentally. I started throwing up a lot, but my family had just had a stomach virus. We didn't really think much of it. And then I missed my period. I had missed my period when me and him were dating, but I also had extremely irregular periods. 
So I didn't really know what to think of it and I didn't really want to think of it because I was 13 years old, maybe 14 years old when I started realizing. I started lying about being on my period to my mom. She's like, I haven't seen you need any like period stuff. Have you been getting your period? I'm like, yeah, I have. I've just been wrapping her up and throwing her away. I didn't know what to think of this missed period. I knew I was pregnant but I didn't want to admit that to myself or anybody else. I didn't know what was gonna happen whenever I told my parents or whenever they found out. You always hear about teen moms getting kicked out, getting shamed by everybody, which did happen, <laughs> but it never ended up good. That's what I thought when I was 13, 14 years old. I did not think this would end up well. I would sit on the toilet and pray for my period to come. I would sit on the toilet with my head down like this and push to see if blood would come out, to see if my period would come because it was so late. That's a detail I've never shared on the internet before. So here I am alone and pregnant. The father of my child does not know that I could be pregnant. I don't want to admit that I probably am. I do not want to take a test. About a month or two after the whole breakup and me just being in bed depressed, my mom takes me to the doctor because I'm just constantly dizzy and my head hurts every day. And I was in bed every single day, all day. I knew something was wrong and I was hoping it wasn't that I was pregnant. I don't know if I didn't want to admit it to my mom or I didn't want to admit it to myself because I knew the second I said those words out loud, my life would change forever. I thought it would ruin my life whenever I first missed my period. I was scared that my life was over, it wasn't. It wasn't over at all. At the doctor, they draw my blood. I tell them what's going on and they're gonna run some labs. This, this was my doctor's office that I've been going to my whole life. My pediatrician was there when I was born. And the nurse who's been the nurse there basically my whole life as well, she suggests that he runs a pregnancy test. She was a young mom as well and she saw the signs. He wasn't even going to run one until she recommended. She ran a pregnancy test, it was positive. I was about three months pregnant and I hid it for three months. Nobody knew for three months. So my doctor calls my mom to tell her the news. He asks her on the phone if he can talk to her in the other room for a minute. I knew what was about to happen. I didn't want to admit it to myself or anybody else, but I knew they were about to find out I was pregnant. She goes into the other room and after they're done on the phone, I was just sitting there in anticipation, waiting to be disowned. I thought I was going to be disowned. <laughs> and she calls me in the room. I'm already on the verge of tears at this point. I was so scared. I, I really did think that I was going to be disowned. My mom calls me in and she says, that was your doctor. You're at least 14 weeks pregnant. I started bawling my eyes out. She said it so bluntly that I didn't know what she was feeling. I couldn't, I couldn't read what she was feeling. So I freaked out because for me, whenever she was blunt, that meant anger, but she wasn't angry, which was also really weird because you'd think if you found out your 14 year old daughter was pregnant, you'd be angry. Or at least that's what I thought would happen. She hugged me. I was bawling my eyes out, apologizing. And she hugged me and told me it was gonna be okay. She told me, we love babies in this house. It's gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay. For me, that was the hardest part, telling my mom. I let her tell my stepdad and my dad because I did not want to tell them. I did not want to face them and tell them. That was too scary for me. I didn't receive any negativity from my close family. Distant relatives had their judgments, but nobody close to me. So now that that was over, the hardest part, I admitted it to myself and I admitted it to my family. It was time to tell my now ex-boyfriend who was the father of my child. I had to tell a 14, 15 year old boy that he was about to be a dad and I was keeping the baby. It was very hard to do because I had not really spoken with him since he broke up with me. I message him and tell him and he thinks I'm playing some joke on him. And my mom texts him and tells him too. So he thinks she's in on it too. And honestly, I don't blame him. 
it seemed like just this huge crazy thing that wasn't real. I didn't feel like it was real either until the doctor told my mom that I am pregnant. So I told him that I would send him a picture of a sonogram as proof. The next thing that happened was we went to the hospital so I could get everything checked out and make sure that my baby was healthy and I was healthy because here I was 14 weeks into a pregnancy with no prenatal care at all. So we go to the hospital and the doctor looks at me really judgmentally and I thought it was because I was so young and it made me really upset. They ran so much blood work when I got there. They did some sort of scan as well, I believe, that wasn't a sonogram. I don't remember. I'm at the hospital feeling very judged, just wanting to see if my baby's healthy. And as soon as the blood work and everything comes back, the doctor seems a lot less frantic and judgy. He wasn't being judgy, he thought I had cancer. And he had told us that it looked a lot like cancer. And it was some sort of rare cancer that I cannot remember the name of. He wasn't trying to be judgy, he was worried that this little girl had cancer. I didn't have cancer, thank God, but I was pregnant, about three months pregnant. So we go to do a sonogram to make sure the baby's healthy. And she told me that I'm not allowed to look at the screen. I'm sorry, it's just procedure. And I still was able to steal a peek. I was looking over at the screen. And as soon as I looked over at that screen, every single worry and fear I had disappeared just like that. Because I saw a little blob with arms and legs and my daughter was kicking her feet and moving her little arms and I just all the tension that I had just I just released it and I felt at peace with the fact that I was about to become a mom at 14 years old. I looked at my baby through the sonogram and I knew it was fate. I knew that this was meant to happen for me and I knew that this would save my life. It's weird to say that getting pregnant at 13, having a baby at 14 would save your life, but it did save my life. It forced me to turn myself around, turn my life back around and make myself get better and become a better person for my daughter. And if I did not have that, I genuinely believe that I would have kept spiraling and ended up dead. And that's really scary to think about. It also makes me really happy to think that this beautiful little girl is the reason that I was able to push myself to stay alive and fight depression and work on myself and become a better person and, bec and heal myself so I could be her mom. She genuinely pushed me to stay alive. I find out that there really is a baby in my stomach. It all felt so much more real, but now that it felt real, I was not scared anymore. I was so excited to be a mom. I immediately started thinking of names and whether I was having a boy or a girl and I just got so excited. Of course, I was still a bit scared, but the excitement and the overall joy that I was gonna become a mother overtook that. And so I ended up sending her dad a picture of the sonogram and he's like, oh, so you really are pregnant. And we had our talk about that. It was a lot. Everything that happened with me and her dad is a completely different story, but it's basically just imagine two 14 year olds and then two 15 year olds, two 16 year olds trying to co-parent. It was a lot, but luckily everything is okay now. After I told Everly's dad and he kind of like believed me and we talked about it, everybody else found out I was pregnant too. I was the laughing stock of the entire school district. I come from an area that has quite a lot of people and there were multiple school districts that I was just the laughing stock of. I would get people sending me the address to abortion clinics. I would get people telling me that I should myself and they hope my baby dies. I was picking up food at Payway with my family and I got a message saying that I should, you know what myself, and they hope I die better yet, my child. And I broke because I was not used to the amount of hate that I was receiving. I had not even announced that I was pregnant when this happened. There were people who posted videos of their friends 
with a ball in their shirt saying, I'm Maddie Lambert, just making fun of me. They, I didn't even know these people, just complete strangers, just totally tearing me down. And these complete strangers probably were doing it too. That's what teenagers do. And just because I got pregnant, I was this horrible person. I was called a whore many times. That was what I was at that point to everybody else. I was a whore. I had been with one person, but I was a whore just because I got pregnant. So many people that I thought were my friends would talk behind my back and make fun of me. I became the laughing stock of every, everyone I knew. Overall, I just felt like a joke and it was hard. Now onto like the rest of my story. I make an appointment to go to an OBGYN to monitor my pregnancy, get me prenatal care and plan my birth. I had severe morning sickness. It wasn't just morning sickness. It was daytime sickness, nighttime sickness, 24 seven sickness basically. I was so dizzy that if I stood up, I had to sit back down. I had to crawl to the toilet to throw up because I could not stand up. Every single day, I just sat in this one chair if I came out of my room. Most of the day, I just sat in this one chair because it was so hard to get up and get out of this chair because if I did, I would become so dizzy and I would just start gagging and have to run to the toilet. I had to sit completely still to feel okay. Luckily, this ended up subsiding once I was about six months pregnant, basically going into the third trimester, but this lasted for so long. So I go to the OBGYN to get everything checked out. They monitored my pregnancy very closely because I was so young and she was measuring behind because whenever you're young and you're pregnant, there's a lot more risks for that baby and you going through that pregnancy. I had hyper and hypothyroidism my whole pregnancy, it would bounce up and down like crazy and it was really hard. When I was a bit later into my pregnancy, I was getting a sonogram or an ultrasound, whatever you want to call it. And the radiologist stayed in one spot for quite some time and took a lot of pictures in this one spot. So I asked, is everything okay? And she's like, oh, I was just looking at something. It should be okay. I go back in. This was the one appointment I went to without my mom who was literally my rock throughout this pre whole pregnancy. She was there for me through everything. I go in to talk to my obstetrician and she tells me that it looks like there's something wrong with her heart. I'll never forget how I felt on this day because I just kind of acted like, oh, okay, is everything gonna be okay? She's like, yeah, it should be okay. We're gonna send you to the high-risk obstetrician next door to get everything looked at. And I went when my mom picked me up and I started explaining it and I tried to explain it calmly and stay calm, but I broke down. I started bawling my eyes out, just saying they think something might be wrong with her heart. Is she gonna be okay? Because the heart, that's a, that's a scary thing to have something wrong with your heart. One of the biggest things that got me through my pregnancy was religion and God. And I, I just prayed, I asked everybody to pray. I prayed every single night. I wasn't scared for me. I wasn't scared about becoming a teen mom. I was scared for my daughter and if she was gonna be okay. We go, I go in and see this high risk obstetrician, scared out of my mind that I'm about to be told that my daughter isn't going to make it and they do scans and they say that it's fine. The part of her heart that they thought was deformed wasn't, it was fine. It's nothing short of a miracle to me because this radiologist saw it in the scan and then we go to another place and it's gone. I am so grateful that everything was okay because that was one of the scariest moments of my life. The rest of my pregnancy was pretty smooth my daughter was growing very fast and it was about time to give birth. I had to go into the hospital once for contractions that I was feeling because it was pretty early and they ended up giving me some sort of steroid shot and baby never came. And then she decided she wasn't gonna come on her own. This little girl was so comfy in my stomach, I guess, because I had to be induced. I didn't feel any starting contractions. I wasn't dilating. 
and I was 39 weeks pregnant. On my 40th week, three days before my due date, I was induced to have my daughter. This was the scariest day of my life. Not just because I was having a baby, but because of the things that happened while I was having a baby. With induction, they basically give you Pitocin, which makes you have contractions to kind of like force you to give birth. And I was given Pitocin and I started having contractions and my daughter, Everly, was in distress. Her heart rate spiked and it was very scary because she was moving like crazy and the contractions were quite literally too much for her. So they had to basically all come in, lower the Pitocin and monitor her very closely. She was okay. This little girl, just like in my stomach, she took her time coming out. I was in labor for about 23 hours. I got an epidural at three centimeters because I am a wuss. They don't tell you about this, but whenever you're giving birth, you physically shake. <laughs> Your whole body just shakes and you can't control it. And it was weird, but I could not stop this shaking whenever I was getting my epidural. So he was like, oops, wrong way, and had to reinsert my epidural into my spine, this huge needle going into my spine. He had to do it twice. It was scary. He says, don't move, this could paralyze you. Oops, wrong way. <laughs> that was definitely a moment. I get my epidural, things are going good. I go to sleep, wake up the next day, still having contractions, they break my water, and then it's baby time. I was wondering what was taking so long and then I felt like I needed to poop. So I called the nurse and I'm like, I um, I feel like I need to poop really bad. I don't know if I'm about to give birth or what, but it feels like I need to poop. I was giving birth. <laughs> she started coming out. Her head was coming out. I felt like I was had to poop. So I called the nurse and it's like, oh, it's time. <laughs> Baby's head's coming out. We start the delivery. And I pushed for so long, I don't remember how long exactly it was. And in the hospital, it was just me, my mom, a birth photographer, and that was, that was it. I pushed for quite some time, and then she finally made her appearance in the world on January 5th at 3.34, which I have tattooed on my arm. Best, best moment of my life. But also the most terrifying moment of my life, because whenever she came out, she didn't start breathing on her own. She didn't cry, and I was holding my newborn baby on my chest. She pooped all over me. I was holding her on my chest, and she didn't start crying. They took her off my chest. A bunch of nurses come running in the room. A bunch of doctors come running in my room, and in the corner there, resuscitating my newborn baby. I remember asking, is she going to live? I knew that there was more risk with teen pregnancy. To add to it all, my daughter being resuscitated in the corner, me trying to birth my placenta, which placentas are so gross. I know they like provide for your child and feed your child, but they're so gross and they feel so gross when you birth them. They're trying to get out the placenta and I asked, would it help if I pushed? So I pushed, I feel this huge blob come out and then I start bleeding out, I start hemorrhaging. So I'm over here with my legs up, hemorrhaging. Well, my daughter's over there being resuscitated. It was a lot. Um, luckily, we are both alive <laughs> and healthy. It really didn't matter to me about how much that was and how scary that was as soon as they handed me my daughter. It was the best thing I had ever felt in my life holding my daughter for the first time. It was magical and it was worth every single moment. Fast forward to now, we just got our first apartment. A month after I turned 18, I moved out of my parents' house. I bought my first car when I was 15 years old. Just bought another car because the car payment on the other one was a bit too high for me and I wanted to be, I wanted to be good with my money. I've been saving to buy a house. Well, fingers crossed, be moving into our first house. I'll be buying a home in about four months. In about four months, I should be buying a home. That's the plan anyways. As long as nothing falls through, I will be buying a home in four months. I was not handed anything. I have worked very, very hard. It started with me selling almost all of my things to buy my daughter clothes and getting free clothes off of neighborhood pages on Facebook. And now here I am. I posted this one video on YouTube and it's given me a way to support me and my daughter, something I'm passionate about and I want to go to college and study psychology 
so hopefully that'll happen soon. My daughter starts preschool this year, so I'll have time to go to school myself. She is the smartest little girl. That's my story. And this is where we are now. Never for a moment have I regretted getting pregnant young. I am proud of myself. I am proud of my daughter for getting to where we are now because nobody thought I would ever even make it out of my mom's house. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new, welcome to my channel. If you already watched my videos, I'm glad you're back. I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed and this is my story, the raw truth about <laughs> what I went through getting pregnant at 13 years old and giving birth at 14. I will see you guys next time. Bye guys.